Cybercrime affects almost one in three of us. These are the new scams you need to watch out for. And I only ever wanted to come forward because I want no one ever to have to go through what I have. <clears throat> it's making me feel like I want to do something, but I can't. They haven't been mugged or robbed. They're victims of cybercrime. You feel gutted, you feel, um, you're devastated really because I'm in a game where I should know these things, but I, I was, I was conned, I was fooled. Online thieves can con the smartest and most diligent people of any age, and they do it time and time again, with Australians reporting cybercrime every 10 minutes. You're ashamed, right? You think, how could this happen to me? How could I let this happen? Helen Edwards had the best of intentions. She says she was trying to start her own charity, helping people with better quality wheelchairs, when a man reached out to her on Facebook. His message was, hi, my late father was a philanthropist and I would love to somehow help you with your wheelchair project. To Helen's delight, he sent her a cheque for $130,000, but the money was just a hook. All of a sudden he rings me out of the blue and says, oh look, there's an emergency, I now need you to send that cheque. I need you to send some of that money to me here for an emergency. So she did, and that's how Helen lost $250,000. It's still there, the hurt, right? And I feel ashamed of myself. Private investigator Simon Smith says he tracked down the con man who fleeced Helen. Well, I found out that he's living a very elaborate lifestyle up in South Africa. So he's definitely a uh, Nigerian scammer. The Joe Blow out there has, hasn't got a hope, hasn't got a hope in, in hell to, to, uh, to see through this sort of thing. If there's one person you wouldn't imagine being swindled, it's financial planner David Valvo. A very influential advisor like myself, who's been in the game longer than I have, he convinced me to invest money with them. Frauds to set up a fake website pretending it was a valid trading platform, promising high returns. Because they're so sophisticated and it looks so real. Because you, um, you get a password and you, you've, you've got a, um, a screen in front of you and it's, it's showing you buy, sell, buy, sell, buy. And you're seeing this money going and, and you can see all the stocks and shares and everything and it just looks so real. David said goodbye to $50,000 when he discovered it was all a scam and his loved ones lost money too. The mistrust now with my wife and friends who I've, I've influenced or tried to help as far as make money. I, one of my best friends lost quite a bit of money too. You don't want to apply for a job and give them all the information about your entire passport and driver's licence. Do not put all your trustworthy data on the internet. Do not send everything out through the internet, but just use it as a secondary source of communication. Well, I'm under stress nearly every day. Now to the case of the missing super. Michael Rogerson was looking forward to retirement. The 60-year-old believes his signature was forged. I got a letter from the superannuation board stating that um, I've taken up out of my uh, superannuation fund uh, $50,000. Michael claims neither the superannuation tribunal nor the fraud squad have given him any answers. The 60-year-old won't be able to kick up his feet and enjoy his golden years any time soon. The way it's going, I'll be going, retiring about 75, 80. While Michael is a victim of stolen identity, Helen and David admit they were too trustworthy. Just goes to show you can't take anything for granted.